Now we're going to look at bringing in relays and the concept of latching and also looking at how the effect of our valve choice can affect on how our system is to be designed. So in a previous video we looked at the impulse valve. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take that one out and I'm going to use um, a 5.2 solenoid but with a spring return. Okay, so we can see spring back on one side, just one solenoid on the other side and then we're connecting it back up. Okay, now if I label this file a Y1, that will link him to the forward strand here. Um, now I'll just delete the reverse for the moment and let's just simulate this and see what happens. Well, if I click forward, he moves forward, okay. But if I take my finger, if I keep my finger on, he, he stays extended. And then when I release my finger, he comes back. Now what you'll also actually see is, if I just, let me just slow it down a wee bit, okay. Um, if I put in a one-way fl flow restrictor. And I want to just slow it down on one side. Oops, a bit, 90. Yeah, we'll go meter out, just slow down the speed. But to remain the power, keep the power. And let's just really slow that down. So we go forward. So you'll see, I'm limiting its, uh, its speed on the forward stroke, but it's not going the full way forward for me. You see, I have to keep my finger held in order for that to get forward. That's because the spring, every time we release the power to the solenoid, spring overrides and brings the valve back. Now this may not be ideal to have to you know, keep your finger on the button to bring the cylinder fully forward. But what we can do is we can use this idea of relays and a latch um, in order to keep power to this output. Okay, So let's see how we do that. Well, what we need to do is we need to bring in a relay. So underneath, let's just see where we are, committed pneumatics into the electrical and go into relays. Okay, so this is your relay. This is what it looks like. It looks very similar now to your valve solenoid, so we won't get them too confused. Right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the valve solenoid out of there because we're going to use him later. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring that switch to a relay. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to call a relay K1. Now, I have a couple of videos of uh, the relay boxes, uh, you know, how to physically build them and wire them on YouTube, so again I recommend having a look at some of them to help. Right, and then what we're going to do is relays, okay, uh, this is how you turn on the relay, but what the relays have internally is some contact switches, okay. Now we don't use the manually operated, we just use these general switches, these make switch and break switches. And again we use the idea of uh, being able to label things the same, so that they become linked together. So see the way this K1, if I label this switch K1, this means that it is a normally open contact for one, that relay. Um, and it can be in a couple of these, two or three, that is linked to this one relay physically. So again, it might not make a huge amount of sense here, uh, but do look at the videos of actually using the hardware as well. But let's just follow through the, the, simul uh, with the simulation. So this K1, what that means is once we give power to this K1, it's going to close over that switch. If we use the brake switch, it would open it up. Right, so let, let me just show you that for a moment. Right, and nothing really has changed too much in the circuit. Some people would say it's just probably overcomplicated for the moment. But you'll see if I click the forward button, K1 gets activated. If K1 gets activated, anything that's called K1 closes over, and then Y1, that gives a supply to Y1, and it follows through. Okay, so we push that, the relay becomes operated, the contact in the relay gets turned over, and it gives power to that. Okay, but it's still, we're still not latching. Okay, so the reason we've we've done this, now relays provide a, a you know, number of safety aspects as well, which are very useful. And you can see it, even though there doesn't seem to be a need to go through relay to, for this, um, you know, a lot of people will still use relays to do something simple like that. But the real key I want to show you is this latching, okay? And how we use latching is, again, oh sorry, come out of the simulation. We're going to bring in a make switch, okay? And I'm just going to bring these a bit across, so we have a bit of room. Again, we're going to call the K switch. 
um, K1, or say the make switch K1, because that links it to the relay. And we're bridging this in, and you might see some links to people that are used to PLC code here. We're bringing the supply in to K1. So you actually have two, even or scenario. You can get power from here or here to turn K1 on. Now, the only way K1 can come on is if we energize it through the forward. It just, this can only come on when K1 is pressed. So hopefully that makes sense that it can actually only go on this loop. But you'll see once that comes on, see the way now K1 has closed over. So it's able to keep power just going through here. And that is what we call a latch there. See the way even after I tuck my finger off that forward button, it's now getting the pathway through these two. Okay, so let me just step you through that again. The only way you can get power K1 is by pressing this forward button. Why? Because this K1 and this K1 will only ever come on when this is energized. So it can never start going through this way. It'll always just come through this way. But once we have given it that, this close over, and then it provides a constant path to keep the energy flowing there. And that's what we call latching it on. Now the problem here is, we've nowhere to break the latch. There's actually no way now to turn off that K1, that K1 relay. How you do is actually cut this, you're cutting the, you have to cut the power in order for it to reset, which isn't ideal either. So this is the other part then of your latch. And you, you always need somewhere to break the latch. And we put that in here and we use a break switch. So we put that in here. So that's now becomes a break switch because initially you want the power to flow through it and then once you want it to come back you want to break the power to that latch which will bring it home and we will call this one the reverse switch that we are using. Put that out to the side. And sorry actually because it's this is actually a, a reverse push button. I'm going to put that in with the push button symbol because it's not just a contact, it's an actual button. Reverse. So again, we still have our two buttons that we used in the previous example, the forward and reverse. And they're going to do the exact same thing. It's just we've now incorporated a relay, this K1, which is going to latch itself on. You see that? The way it's allowed to pass through that normally closed push button keeps it powered up so that we don't have to keep our finger on the button, it moves the full way forward and then we hit reverse when we want to bring it back, even if we wanted to bring it back halfway, halfway mark we can do that, we're breaking that latch. So that's the idea of a latch, it always looks like this, you have your kind of start condition to start the latch, you will latch on your relay and then your relay will be fed back in on itself here and then in between the relay and where it's kind of fed back in, you'll have the brake part because that's going to break any supply from either of those those pathways that I can get there. So this will always be the same kind of setup. So obviously you'll be using maybe a different relay or different buttons um, or sensors or whatever it is to um, to operate it. So that's the base of a relay, spring return valve, latching, and the contacts. And again, I recommend watching the actual hardware video of this, not just a software video, uh, so that can become, you know, deeper and deeper in your understanding.